Hi everyone, welcome back to Lifco Hydraulics. We're here in the cylinder shop for part two of our steel mill cylinder repair. Don't worry if you missed the first one, you can jump right in. We've still got plenty of challenges ahead with seals, machining, and some tricky dry fitting. So let's get into it. So let's get the, the seals on here. This is my first time with V-Pack seals. He's already done the math, figured it all out. This is our stack that's going yeah. in. There's actually more, right? We had to take one out. There, there's a bit of a science to it. Yeah, the V-Packs come in a set uh, with five rings. You've got fabric rings and urethane rings in the stack, well as a top adapter and a bottom adapter. We had a bearing machined for the bottom of that gland groove. Pretty snug fit. You might have to tap it in. It's a sliding fit on the pin, but it needs to be a very close close sliding fit to make sure everything stays aligned. There we go. Yep, this is in there. And we want to put it in so that the V's are in the direction of the pressure. Put a like, little extra. Little. And the way these V-packs work is they need to be compressed to create the proper seal. Based on the, the height of the gland, from the bearing to the top. And we've got that pilot diameter there. This will compress when we bolt it on, that distance will be closed. And that compresses about 6% of the height, creates a seal on the outside and then seal on the pin. And these types of seals, they're adjustable over time. If we had to, we could add a ring here and give it a little extra push on the compression to tighten up the seal if, if we needed to. We could control the diameters and make it a perfect fit. The scraper wiper that is to make sure anything on the rod is actually peeled off as the rod is retracting to keep any contamination out of the bore. There's a groove on the inside of the gland just above the height of the scraper. And I don't know if you can see it there. That retainer ring actually is what secures. The scraper sits below the groove a retainer ring snaps in and holds it yeah. holds it in place. So this is the scraper. It has a split in it. It's actually spring loaded there. But it has a spring that keeps it, keeps tension, yeah. And then this is the retainer. This clips into the groove and retains the scraper. This is used for mill applications, right? Yeah, there's a lot of contamination. Yeah, that won't fall out. Yep. There we nice. go. Yep. got to put the rod in the lathe. I'll show you why. We can't have the gland on for assembly. A lot of damage. Somebody at some point put a pipe wrench on the end of the rod. We've got to assemble the piston on the other end first. Yep. And then slide the gland over this side, but that'll chew it up right up. I think we've got to take a skim off that. Yep. So we would like to put it in with no seals, the piston, all the bearings and bushings, and make sure that it... Do a dry fit? Do a dry fit. Make sure it moves back and forth. We don't feel any drag. Yep. And it also looks better. Yeah. Torque range set to 188. I took, I took that O-ring out. We just did a dry fit. 
mm -hmm. got longer bolts, and then we just use them to draw it in. The dry fit was nice. Should be all straightforward now. There we are. Just gotta get them closed, yep. and then I'll finish them with the torque wrench. 80 foot ah. pounds. 80? Yeah. There's the Tunyon bushings. They're to keep, uh, keep these in the fixture. They'll press in to the fixture that the customer's using. It protects the pins and there's grease channels in there to keep them lubricated in operation. Yeah. They're the check valves. Okay. They also act as a throttle. Oh. Uh -huh. Want them on either on yeah. on either side with the cushions you can get the pressure accumulation. They oh. can be set. There's a set screw here that you can do a fine adjust. So when the cushion engages at the end, you can kind of get a fine fine adjustment on the speed for that last say inch to three-quarter inch half inch of travel based on the taper I believe in this it was a three-quarter inch taper so in that three-quarter inches as the taper engages the diameter that it travels through the flow reduces 80 Just spin it around, then yeah. we're not reaching over. Yeah. Smarter, not harder. We're using longer bolts to draw it in, and then we'll swap them out. It's working. Trying to go even, too, nice and square. I can feel it when it goes too much and kind of you don't want it to get cocked on the way in there and these were what 40 foot 40 pounds? foot pounds Let's keep pulling it in be close 40 might need to get these out of the way yeah at least one of them So that's a 78 fine thread on there. Okay, now we're all torqued up. The important part is that the shoulder of the part that slides in, the shoulder is bottomed out. So. Okay. And there's this O-ring around that, so that's what creates a seal. Perfect. Now we actually don't torque this on. We just thread it on a good ways. But this is actually set apparently so they can sort of fine adjust the length of it and then jam the nut back up against it. Whatever mechanism they're actuating is going to be connected with a plate through here and a pin.
for a 7.8 SAE ORB fitting, uh, 48 foot pounds. You have the flow really low? Huh? You have the flow set down? Right. Okay, good. Right. The right away check to see if it's dry. That would be one of the first things you would see. If right now, that's this is just the initial run. We're check the whole stroke nice and slow, make sure everything's fine. Then we'll speed it up and gradually increase the pressure up to the full testing pressure for this cylinder. Their system runs at 2,000, we'll test up to 2,000 PSI. That's the cushion action. Yep. Because it's still drawing in, we can adjust that. We knew the testing was gonna take quite a bit longer than normal with this. It's got a long stroll. Yeah, I'm gonna it's put the, the uh, I'm gonna set it for 60 minute recording. Yeah. We don't want the clock to run out before we're done. Yeah, we can always trim it. The last cylinder we tested had a stroke of like, what, 10 inches maybe? Yeah, and I think it was 12 minutes. Fit. Yeah, this one is fully in. That one tapered bushing that we put on there? Yeah. It's the action of that going into the cushion. That's nice. I think we're ready to start recording. Yeah. We'll start at 500 PSI and work the, our way up to system pressure, in this case, 2000. And then what we'll do each time we go to the next in increment, we'll hold pressure at retract and then again at extend for about 20 seconds, 30 seconds, hold it there. And then we'll run it in and out a few times and then turn up the pressure. We work the seals in and if there is a failure, we want to see the failure at a lower PSI. If you were to look at the module just on the table there, yeah. it gives you an exact readout from the sensors. System pressure is two, we test the 2,000. And we'll do a bypass test. Shove this off. On piston. So we seal off this line and all our pressure and flow on this line. Go between the gland and the piston. That's where we'll have all the pressure. If there's any failure in the piston seal, or the piston seals, the fluid will bypass from this region into the other side and we would actually see the rod extend. Because that, if that happens, the cylinder won't actually be able to hold any load it. as it's supposed to. The cylinder would tend to, to creep down yep. if it's trying to hold any weight. Not good. The cylinder's still very nice and dry. Yep, we'll mark a line. So that way we can gauge it and we'll leave it We'll leave the pressure on for five minutes, 10 minutes. See we'll see, drift. we'll it, see any movement. If bypassing, it'll, you'll see the line moving out this way. Right now we're putting pressure on this side. So if it leaks past the piston, it'll fill oil in the back of the tube and push it outward. If they have a holding application, so if they want to like lift something and hold it there in that position, and then like, you know, come back in a couple hours and it's still there. Still, yeah. If it's got a bypass leak, they, they'll come back in a couple hours and it'll drift down. Yeah, it's holding pressure between the gland and the piston right now. It's just holding at that pressure. 
got to set it down, open up the valve, drain out all the fluid, bring the rod in, and then after that, cleaning, painting, and then ship it off.